Welcome to part two of Rational Exponents and Radical Expression. <laughs> We're gonna learn a new rule right now. So our new rule is if I have the nth root of a and the nth root of b are real numbers, then I can change that expression, so a radical over a radical, to be one big old radical. And the opposite is true too. If I have one big old radical, so fractions, I can separate to be a radical on top and a radical on the bottom. Just as long as b does not equal zero because you know we don't like zeros in denominators. Rationalizing radicals. When an expression contains a radical in the denominator, you must rationalize the denominator. To do so, rewrite the expression so that the denominator contains no radicals. So just like we don't like zeros in denominators, we also do not like radicals in denominators. So we, all, so we want to do what's called rationalizing. Rationalizing means I'm getting rid of the radical in the denominator, period. Okay. So I have a radical 2 in that denominator, so I'm going to multiply it by a radical 2 to get rid of it. That's pretty simple, right? Because what's going to happen is I'm going to get radical 2 on top, and then that 2 times that 2, remember that rule that we learned in the last part, is if my radicals are the same type of radical, I can multiply those, both of those numbers. So 2 times 2 equals 4. So what I know about radical 4, or the square root of 4, is that the square root of 4 equals what? It equals 2, and then radical 2 stays on top. That's my goal. I know I've completed the task because there's no more radicals in the denominator of the problem. So let's try it with a cube root. It's a little bit different with a cube root, okay? So with a cube root, what happens is I still wanna multiply by the cube root of two, but I don't wanna do it once, I wanna do it twice. Because on the bottom, I want there to be three cube roots. Why? Because a cube stands for three. So three of them need to be on the bottom so that they all simplify to be one whole number. So Miss Burnett, what you talking about? Okay, great. On top, I'm gonna get square root of, or cube root of two times the cube root of two. That's gonna give me the cube root of four. On the bottom, I'm gonna have the cube root of two times the cube root of two times the cube root of two. That's gonna give me the cube root of eight. What's the cube root of eight? There you go, a two. And now, are there any radicals in our denominator? No, there are not. Have I done my job? Yes, I have. So the other rule that we learned was the quotient rule. And the quotient rule told us basically that if I have two radicals on top of each other in a fraction form, I can make them one big fraction and one big radical on the outside. So that's what I did here in that first step of that problem, right? So two radicals, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make them one big old radical. Why did I make them one big old radical? Because now I can simplify, okay? So what's gonna happen with the 18 over the two? What's 18 divided by two? Nine. And then x to the fifth, over x cubed is gonna leave me with x squared because five minus three equals dose. Now, is nine a perfect square? Yes, it is. Is x squared a perfect square? Yes, it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify that to be three x because the square root of nine is three and the square root of x squared is x. Let's try another one. Let's have the cube root of 162y to the fifth and the cube root of 3y squared. Cube roots, not square roots. Cube. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it one big old radical. And we're going to see what we can simplify with that one big old radical. 
So 162 over 3. What's 162 over 3? Well, it's 54. I'm so glad you asked. And then y to the fifth over y squared. What's that going to simplify to? Well, 5 minus 2 equals 3. Okay. Now, 54 is not a perfect cube root. In the last problem, 9 was a perfect square, so I could take the square root. But 54 is not a perfect cube. So I'm going to have to simplify it by doing the prime factorization, which we did in that last section. 9 times 6. Can I break apart the 9? Can I break apart the 6? 9 is 3 times 3, and 6 is 2 times 3. So I need to break apart the y's also. So y, y, y. I'm going to look for groups of what? Three groups of three because it's a cube root. Okay, so look at that. I have three threes, they weren't touching each other, but I can rearrange them and that's fine. And then I have three y's. Everything that gets circled comes to the outside, everything that's not circled stays inside. Three y cube root of. Let's do the fourth root of 16x to the eighth over five. Now look, this problem is different from the others because everything is under the radical already. But remember in math, if I can go forwards, I have to be able to go backwards. So I have the fourth root of 16x to the eighth over five, and I can't simplify 16 over five. They don't go into each other evenly. So to try to simplify my problem, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate the radicals for one radical to be on top and one radical to be on the bottom. So on the bottom, I have the, the, the fourth root of five, which is not going to be even. So I'm going to have to get rid of that. But before I get rid of that, I'm going to go ahead and simplify 16x to the eighth because it's under a radical and I need to see if it can be simplified. So 16 is going to turn out to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then those 8x's and I'm looking for groups of 4. Looking for groups of 4 because it's a fourth root problem. So I have one group of 4, all four twos. I have another group of 4, 4x's. Four and then another group of four, another four x's. So is there going to be a radical left in the numerator of this problem? No, because everything is circled. Okay, so I'm going to take a two out and two x's x squared. On the bottom, notice I still have a radical five. Are we allowed to keep radicals in the denominator of our problems? We sure can't. That is against the rules of math. So I want to rationalize that fourth root of five. Okay? I'm going a little slower now because I know I just did a lot already. And the problem is not over yet. So for me to rationalize the fourth root of five, I'm going to have to have five, or sorry, I'm going to have to have four fives on the bottom. So that means three of them, multiplying by three, because that's already the one that's in the problem, right? So I'm multiplying by the four through to five, four through to five, four through to five. If I do it on the bottom, I've got to do it on the top. So on the top, what I'm going to get, that two X squared is going to stay there. And then I'm going to multiply five times five times five. Three times is the fourth root of 125. On the bottom, I'm multiplying 5, 5, 5, 5, 4 times, and I'm going to get 625, the fourth root of 625. Now, if I did my problem correctly, should I have any radicals in the bottom still? Sure shouldn't. Okay, so that's going to give me on the bottom a 5. And the top stays the same because I can't simplify the fourth root of 125. I'll go ahead and leave that alone. Okay, on the bottom, though, no more radicals. That's how I know I did my job. Whew. 
Okay, so let's simplify the radical. Simplify the radical. Again, my problem is a fraction under one big old radical. And I can't simplify anything under there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simplify. By separating the radicals. The fourth root of x to the eighth is x squared. Okay? And on the bottom, I'm still going to have a fourth root of 3. I hope I didn't lose y'all there. On the top, there was 8 x's. And if I circle groups of 4, there's two groups of 4, so x squared. On the bottom, 4th root of 3. But I can't have radicals on the bottom. So I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the 4th root of 3. How many times do I have to multiply by the 4th root of 3? I'm so glad you asked. Three of them, because I should have a total of 4 on the bottom. And if I do it on the bottom, I have to do it on the top. So I'm going to get x squared. That stayed the same. I'm going to get the fourth root of 27 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And then I'm going to multiply the 3s 4 times. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's going to give me 81. The fourth root of 81, lucky for us because we did our problem correctly, is going to be a... x squared, fourth root of 27 over 3 is your final answer. One more slide and I'll put you out of your misery for now. Okay. So multiply the radical. So let's say I multiply two, because so we're putting everything all together. I have two square roots. Lucky for us, we're comfortable with square roots. So multiplying, so I'm gonna multiply. Remember, since they're both square roots, I can multiply everything and put them under one radical. So 12 times 15 is gonna be 180. X to the fourth times X squared is going to give me x to the sixth, y squared times y cubed is going to be y to the fifth. So I'm going to go ahead, now that everything's under one radical, I'm going to simplify what I can simplify. So 180 3 times 3, 2 times 2 times 5. That's the prime factorization of 180. Now, I'm going to have 6x's and I'm going to have 5y's. So it's a square root problem. So I'm going to make groups of 2. 1. Another one. Another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. Another one. Okay, everything that gets circled gets put on the outside. Everything that is not circled stays on the inside. So I took one, two out, one, three out. Okay, notice that five stayed on the inside. I took three X's out, two Y's out. That last Y, that lonely Y, is going to stay on the inside. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 x's is going to go ahead and make that x cubed. Those 2 y's are going to go ahead and make that y squared. The 5 y stays on the inside. That's my final answer. And you finished another part of this lesson. I want you, I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over again. I want you to rewrite the examples that we did on a separate sheet of paper without looking at the one that you just took notes on. I want you to go ahead and try those problems and see if you get the same answers without my help. Okay? And I'll see you in the part 3.
three.